Last time, we saw how the New Japan Partnership nearly killed Noah. This time, we're going to see how they performed afterwards. Noah was now founded by an IT development company called SB, with former All Japan President Masayuki Uchida to be the new president, with Akira Tawe stepping down to an advisor role. Uchida inherited a mess. Noah had lost nearly 29% of their attendance numbers after the Suzuki Goon stable. But Uchida decided that wouldn't stop his direction for the promotion. He toured with the wrestlers to learn about what makes Noah, Noah. To get details on what to rebuild. While during this rebuild, he added a slogan to Noah called, Noah the Reborn. And began focusing the matches to be less crowded and more intense. By that I mean cutting the overusage of opening card multi-man tag team matches and having the wrestlers get people's attention by the level of stiffness. They also received partnerships with American wrestling promotions like Border City Wrestling and Impact Wrestling. These connections would be vital to bring in one of Noah's younger wrestlers, Kaito Kiyomiya, the opportunity to perform an excursion tour in Canada. Many of Noah's wrestlers began excelling in the new direction, such as GHC heavyweight champion Katsuhiko Nakajima, Takashi Sugiura, Go Shiozaki, Keno, and Naomichi Marufuji. Despite the low attendance, Nakajima was giving the fans that did remain the best match he could physically give. For example, at a Korokan Hall show in July of that year, Nakajima defended the title against a machine called Brian Cage. The match was not only Noah's best match that year, but it was the first match from Noah that Dave Meltzer himself rated since 2009. The junior heavyweight division was seeing the rebuild too. Daisuke Harada would receive a bigger focus where he would lead three new debuting wrestlers, Yohei, Hayata, and Tadasuke in a stable called Rattels. This stable would become one of the high points of this era in Noah. And Taiji Ishimori, one of Noah's top junior heavyweights, won Impact Wrestling's X Division Championship. 2017 was also the year where a foreign wrestler won the GHC heavyweight title for the very first time. Impact Wrestling's Eddie Edwards would defeat Nakajima for the belt in a big shock. But of all of the foreigners to win the title, Edwards made a lot of sense. He trained in the Noah Dojo when he first came overseas, and was a part of several tours since that training. All of the top wrestlers in Noah would go all out at the Global League tournament to reclaim the title. Marufuji recently failed to reclaim the title from Edwards, but was in a heated feud with Shiozaki. Shiyazaki wanted to redeem himself to the fans after leaving for All Japan years before, and felt this tournament was the key. But Marufuji was a major obstacle for him, since at this time, he never defeated Marufuji in a singles match. But despite the major feud taking over the tournament, Marufuji would not make the finals, being spoiled by the up-and-comer Masa Kitamiya, who guaranteed Shiyazaki to proceed to the finals, against the dark horse, Keno. The battle between the two was fierce, but Keno came out victorious. And on the showdown with Edwards, he also came out victorious at a sold out Corican Hall. After the match, Keno would announce that he would take Noah back to the Budokan, while Kiyomiya returned from excursion, challenging for the title. Their match would be the main event to 2018's opening show where Keno won by knockout. March saw three big events unfold. The first being Takashi Sagira winning the GHC heavyweight title from Keno. The other being Taiji Ishimori leaving Noah after losing the GHC junior heavyweight tag team title match. His team with High 69 or Hiroki, whatever you want to pronounce it, they lost to Yoshinari Ogawa and Minoru Tanaka. And upon hearing of Ishimori's leave, Ogawa vacated the titles. And the last major event was actually in All Japan, 
where Mario Fuji was announced to be part of that year's Champion Carnival Tournament as Noah's representative. In fact, he would win the tournament and challenge for All Japan's Triple Crown title later that year. During the rest of spring and summer, Sugira was dominating all of his opponents. While two of Noah's top wrestlers united as a tag team known as Axes, Shizaki and Nakajima. And Maru Fuji was actually in the talks with the WWE, sparking rumors that WWE was going to use him to enter the Japanese market, such as NXT UK, NXT Japan. In the end, it was revealed that Maru Fuji went in talks to get a former Noah wrestler in the WWE to come over for a one night reunion show. Mara Fuji's 20th anniversary was coming up, and he wanted to face his greatest rival, Kenta. But there was a condition. He had to be presented in his WWE character of Hideo Itami. Mara Fuji's 20th anniversary show at the Sumo Hall was one of Noah's biggest shows of the year. Despite being announced as Itami, no one cared, and called him by the name they remembered him as, Kenta. The show did feature one sad moment. It was Morishima's appearance. Back in July, he announced that he wanted to return to wrestling, and wanted to get a show called Genesis, where he wanted to face Sugira in his return. But things didn't look well for him. During the show, he acted erratic, and during the plug for his return show, he called for Keno by using his real name. And he proceeded to take his own shirt off and give it to Keno so he could give it to his return opponent, Sagira. Keno would just leave the shirt in the interview room, and when Sagira saw it, he used the shirt as a towel, called Morishima rude, and didn't even bother to plug the show that he was supposed to go to to face Morishima. Morishima's luck would keep running out. A little bit over a week after the Marufuji anniversary show, he was diagnosed as having septic arthritis in his feet and underwent surgery. The event was called off and would be set for a rescheduling, but that never came. Morishima's behavior was becoming unbearable for many people. He begged for money while going on binging sprees at bars. He was kicked out of his apartment and even lived in fans' homes for a night here and there. This would culminate in a terrible moment in November. On November 4th, he took a taxi ride where he had the cab drive around looking for people that he could beg to pay for his fare. After a while, the cabbie stopped and demanded he pay for the fare. Morishima would assault the cabbie, breaking both of his cheekbones. He would be arrested for assault. Remarks from people who knew him were of disappointment, with the harshest remarks from Sugira, who called him a child. Not much is known of what happens afterwards, but according to a reporter, he is doing much better now, away from the wrestling world, developing to become more than just a wrestler, but an adult. Noah's year would end with the show at the Yokohama Bunka Gymnasium, where every title changed hands, including the heavyweight title. Takashi Sugira would be defeated by the prodigy Kaito Kiyomiya. Kiyomiya broke many records for Noah in 2018. He was the youngest to win the Global Tag League, the youngest to win the Global League, the youngest to win the GHC Tag Team title, and now the youngest to win the GHC Heavyweight title. Kiyomiya was set to be the star to take the helm in 2019. In 2019 started with a strong Korokin show where Kiyomiya defeated Keno in a standout match. Despite strong shows, they are changing the direction of the shows back to before the rebranding, 
where the multi-man tag team matches in the lower card were returning, and were going low on funding. So low that President Uchida announced that 75% of the promotion's shares were sold to Lidette Entertainment, and Lidette would prepare for massive rebrandings in an attempt to erase any stigmas that Noah had from the past. From changing the logo and erasing the green that all Noah fans recognize to a bland white at their Yokohama show in March. They would even change the Global League's name to the N1 to rival the G1 Climax most definitely. Several debuts at the promotion would happen this year from Nosawa Rangai who would later become one of the bookers for the promotion. Kazushi Sakuraba, one of the greatest fighters from Pride, and former IWGP heavyweight champion Kazuyuki Fujita. The promotion would see two major stables form, Sugira Goon led by Sugira and Kongo led by Keno. The promotion would push for bigger shows to compete with New Japan, such as their biggest show of the year at the Sumo Hall in November. At this show, Noah would debut a new championship, the GHC national title. This was the first time Noah had a fifth belt in 10 years with a forgotten hardcore openweight title. Sagira would become the inaugural champion after defeating Michael Elgin. Meanwhile, Kiyomiya defeated Keno in a title rematch from earlier in the year. Kiyomiya survived all of 2019 as champion, cementing himself as one of the top wrestlers in Noah. How will he fare in 2020? That's right, Kiyomiya lost the title on the first show of 2020 to Go Shiazaki. Shiazaki would start Noah's 20th anniversary year as the heavyweight champion, but the whole world was not prepared for this occasion. A specific virus took over the world and caused lockdowns and restrictions worldwide. Many promotions canceled upcoming shows, and even canceled audiences from being in the venue, like at a March Cork and Hall show where the main event saw Go Shiozaki defend his title against Kazuyuki Fujita. But this match started with a 32 minute stare down that reminded me of that one scene in Evangelion with a frozen frame that lasted for over a minute. I cannot be the only one who thought of that. I did not like this match in the slightest. <laughs> The Puro World would see a massive blow on April 1st, where Wrestle 1, a promotion made by Keiji Mudo after leading an exodus from All Japan in 2013, would hold their final show. Several wrestlers from Wrestle 1 would join Noah within the upcoming years that we will be seeing, such as Alejandro, Daiki Anaba, Kai Fujimura, Manabu Soya, Seki Yoshioka, and the founder of Wrestle 1 himself. Keiji Mudo. One major event I kind of forgot to mention that also happened in January of this year, before getting into the whole Russell One closing, was Noah being acquired by Cyber Agent, an advertising company with many subsidiaries and products. For example, Amoeba, a Japanese social media website, Abima TV, and Psy Games. A developer whose most famous game is Grand Blue, all have connections to Cyber Agent. In fact, Cyber Agent weren't strangers to wrestling, as they were the owners of DDT Pro Wrestling and its sub brand promotion, Ganbare Pro Wrestling, since 2017. Cyber Agent would also acquire Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling this year, too. Cyber Agent added Noah to DDT streaming service and would rename the service to Wrestle Universe. In July, due to financial issues from the Cyber Agent acquired promotions, were feeling due to that specific thing, they had to do a little press conference where it was announced that all four promotions would be merged as a new company called Cyberfight effective in September of that year. Despite the merging, 
each promotion would continue to operate as a separate entity. Like how the WWE have had their Raw and SmackDown shows as separate entities. If that gives a good example. Noah would see two major events unfold at this time period. Now Michi Marafuji would create a stable to combat Kongo and Sugira Goon called M's Alliance, featuring Mudo and a debuting Masakatsu Funaki, Pancrase legend himself. And the biggest tragedy for Noah in 2020 happened here too. The tag team of Axes broke up. Nakajima would betray Shiozaki and join Kongo, setting him up as Shiozaki's next challenger. The match between them for the title was a 42 minute war that made many believe in Noah's match quality to be equal to New Japan's at this time period. Shiozaki wasn't done yet with the insane matches, as in December, he battled against Sagira in a match of the year contender. In fact, this match was rated 5 stars by Dave Meltzer, the first match in Noah to earn this recognition since Kenta Kobashi vs. Jun Akiyama at the Tokyo Dome in 2004. As the year ended, Noah was financially secure compared to their turbulent past. Fans were coming back with interest, and they now had a solution to their television woes with a streaming service. Noah's hull has been mended, and now their journey will be less perilous. What new horizons will the Ark see in this new odyssey?